Right, I have in my hand the Fringe UHF uh, Dipexer 3740. Uh, basically, uh, the purpose of this is to take two different UHF aerials and join them together. Okay, and the reason you would be doing this is if you had a scenario where you needed to pick up from two different transmitters. So a typical example would be if you lived on the east coast of Ireland, or it was, I suppose the west coast of Wales, or more particularly uh, the border between um, the north and south of uh, Ireland. Okay, so what you have there is you have a scenario where you have. On a certain frequency, you, you will have the free view signals being broadcast in the north, and on a different uh, frequency range, um, you will have the serial view channels. And in certain circumstances, it provides you with the ability to put up uh, two aerials, run them into a single combiner like this, or a diplexer, and what you have then is a single cable that runs from there, and you can run it into a TV distribution simple or off your TV directly, and it'll allow you then to have both free view and serial view on a single cable, as if it's a single feed coming in. So uh, there's two variations of them. And the reason we have this is that if we think about it, if you were, will say, living in um, Wexford, we'll say, and you're trying to pick up a, a free view signal from um, the UK, well, probably you won't need to amplify your local uh, transmitter um, aerial because you'll probably be quite close to it. So a standard UHF aerial going directly for it will pick it up. But if you're trying to aim the second aerial over towards Wales, uh, and it's a distance of 100 or 200 kilometers away, what you might need to do then is amplify the signal. And that means using a power unit and a, um, a mass and amplifier to boost that signal and run it down. And how it works on, on a unit like this is that uh, you're running the two signals in, and on one side or one leg, uh, you'll be able to run a power unit with a mass amplifier on the far side just underneath the aerial, and on the other side you won't. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna remove the cover here. So basically the construction is the same in both cases. There's an outer plastic cover here, so it's mounted like this, and we use this tie wrap to go through the back, and we tie it directly off a pole, and we, we tighten it uh, nice and tight, okay? And if we come along and we look here, we'll say there's a true leg here, A137, and then common, and then there's E40 to 60. So basically what it's saying is the UHF spectrum uh, runs between 21 all the way up to 68. Well, the part that's actually used for TV now just goes up as far as 60. And what it's saying is that we're able to come along and um, and this true leg here, what we're able to use is a mass, uh, a power passing unit. And on this particular unit here, we can just have a direct aerial. Our alternative scenario here is where we have um, a21 here and the true leg is on the top part of it here. So what you'd need to do is uh, look on the free TV website and you'll see there's a map of all the main transmitters and indeed if you link through you can go to all the sub-transmitters in Ireland, find out what your frequency range is and choose the one that's best uh, for you and then look to the UK or the, the across the border to see what the other transmitter is and then say well which um, which aerial will just work naturally by itself and which will need to be amplified and that's the unit that you choose so there's a little bit of thinking on it here so we have a couple of trade customers in particular who know their local area and buy these in particular uh, with an older version of this there used to be a single um, diplexer like this and there was a switch and you could choose which would be the power pass or not but unfortunately that's not manufactured anymore so we just carry both types here but both will we believe prove to be uh, it's sort of a niche product, but at freetv.ie here, we're trying to cover the full range of products people might need, even for complicated installs. So to provide sort of a, a one-man stop or a one-shop stop for even complicated um, setups. Um, so, that's, um, so that's basically it. Uh, the actual wiring on it's quite simple. We just pare down the cables here. So we run one aerial in here, we run the other aerial in there, and uh, we run a single cable out through here. And it's important that it's mounted this way so the cables are always running upwards. Other, or, otherwise, it follow the, the, um, the, the water might be able to follow the cable directly through. Now, uh, one final thing I'm going to say in, in relation to this, um, these type of um, setups work quite well, but the scenario where it won't work for you is if both the free view and the serial view are using the same um, range of frequencies, 
then you're into a, a problem simply because suddenly then you have the problem that you can't join two signals together that um, have uh, an overlap in frequency because either it's going to input one or input two and there's a range on it so there's a logic behind how it works so but the, the lucky thing is that in most setups in most scenarios there is a workaround where you'll be able to get both free view and serve view together on a single frequency um, possibly because there's some level of coordination between free view and serve view although I've never actually been able to get to the bottom of that so that's it anyway an overview of the fringe UHF diplexer 3740 with an option of uh, power pass on either input one or two is that okay